Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119, also HarbachElectronics.com. I've been getting a lot of Harbach orders, um, I have been running ragged with that, I try, well I, I've been getting everyone out, uh, every one of them out within a business day, usually two at the most, if, like I said, if there was a crazy amount of orders on something and I was waiting on replacements, um, for whatever it was, uh, usually people have been ordering a lot of fan kits, so I'd say 99% of the time within one business day, so if you order a kit, I get it out quick. <laughs> so, another AL811H here, so I'm going to go over what I see and uh, get to work on it. Um, this is a newer one, I, a customer had uh, problem, he's blown the fuses, didn't send the original tubes, he's getting brand new Pentalab 572s. I already started taking it apart, I'm like, oh no, I forgot to do a video. So, so uh, the windings were coming undone, I ended up re-gluing them, grab a pointer, and soldered the base of the plate choke, uh, be positive, and so I took the parasitic board out, Wires are starting to fray on this side, so I'm going to change the wires, I mean the straps. So, 10 meter mod has not been done, I'll do that, customer wants that done. I pull the whole socket assembly out, ground the grids right to the metal. Put gas discharge tubes underneath, I'm going to tighten up on hardware. Fix any solder joints. This one was made in 2020, so newer ones tend to have more quality control issues. I'll take the gas discharge tube off the board along with the metal oxide variester on the board. I can see it down there. I'm going to change the SO239s. The one in the input has a lot of grip. The one in the output isn't as strong as input one so just not worth taking the risk the connectors are cheap not a big deal to change them and um, major failure of any amp uh, usually occurs when you have an open on the output I don't care if it's solid state tube whatever no matter what protection you have when an amp like this or solid state amp that's built for the ham community a lot of times you end up with a failure so cheap insurance just to have really good connectors and I get them from Allen Bond at Max Gain Systems Hey, so I'm going to get to work. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I'll see you guys soon. Stay tuned. Okay, so I grounded each grid. There's one grid connection per tube. One connection does nothing. The other two connections are for the filament. I don't know why they set it up like that. They should have had the unused one, a grid connection also within the tube that for that pin. You get a better connection to either ground or the circuit if they're not grounded. So I always drill four new holes, use a 632 screw with a cap nut. I tighten it with a wrench. Nice and tight, super tight. Instead of going through the screw, a lot of times this nut is loose where they make the connection to ground through the screw and you'll end up with an open grid and end up usually you'll take the tube out and have other issues. So better way to do it right to the metal okay so I added the gas discharge tubes all all the four filaments are in parallel so I need one per side I prefer this way so it's not uh, back feeding through the board through the one on the board if you have a newer one on the board uh, the early ones had didn't have one at all so better way to do it so with the 572s it's unlikely to have a flash over from the anode to the filament you know with the 572s, but the Chinese ones, it's a very likely failure, and I put them in, you say, why, why'd you, why, why do you put them in? Well, this uh, gentleman ever sells it to someone, they might put 811s in, so I'd rather have them in here, and it'll protect their receiver and their transceiver, because it could actually backfeed all the way into the radio with the 811s. It's just a China thing. If you had older tubes, I mean, the USA, then that's a different story. Okay, so... I removed the gas discharge tube, the metal oxide varistor. I zip tied all the wiring over there. 
restrip the wires, tighten up on all these standoffs too with a quarter inch wrench. This was really loose right here, that connection. That's a big no-no, you don't want that. So um, I'm gonna get back to work, see you guys soon. Also changed the SO239, sorry. Brand new ones from Alan Bond, Teflon, and these are high quality. Not all SO239s are created equal. You know, a lot of times they, the customer will have a solder glob on their pin, they will spread the clips on a poor quality one, and then it just ends up needing a replacement. Or they'll put the PL259 in at an angle, and they spread the clips. So these are way better. So see you guys soon. Okay, so we're back with the completed Ameritron AL811H. I'll go over everything real quick. So someone changed the meter protection diode and they destroyed the trace on this side. So I went around the solid lead that's going through the ferrite piece right here. Crimped it. Well, clamped it with my needle nose pliers. Soldered it. Soldered the other end. I tighten the screws on the back. I think the last video they were loose. I do that so I can pry the board out a little bit to change the SO239s. Those are tight. The ones on the opposite side, inner side, are tight. As I showed you before, new SO239s, ground at the grids. There's uh, brand new Pentalab tubes. Awesome company, awesome customer service. Great people over there. Tightened up on the nut in the back of the air variable cap on the plate side. Fix the windings on the plate choke, zip tied the wiring, touch up on other solder joints, fix this connection over here. You don't ever want it open there at a bad solder joint. Also touched up on the connection over here between the load cap and the coil. So that's what that uh, lead is for. And uh, that's about it. Tested it on all bands and she is good. So thanks for watching. Website is ampreparegui.com. The other site is harbachelectronics.com. Please like, share, and subscribe. Lots of amps here to fix. I love doing it. I have some Harbach orders to fill. I had three master kits the other day. A lot of work to fill those. So the screws for the standoffs were actually loose on the bottom. So those are all tight. And uh, again, that's it. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Till next time. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. See you guys later. 73.